Hello, this is Wesley Fryer with Moving at the Speed of Creativity, and in this screencast, which I'm creating for my Technology for Teachers class, about which you can learn more on PowerfulIngredients.com, we're going to talk about the third step of creating a VoiceThread digital story, which is choosing your share options. We've already chosen to upload our images and add titles and our attribution links. We've added voice comments to our pictures, and now we're going to click on link number three, which is the share options. And these have changed over time with VoiceThread, but they're basically the same. The first thing that you'll notice here at the bottom is that you have some choices with respect to publishing options, and you can go ahead and click on that first. You need to decide if you want to allow anyone to view your VoiceThread. And I would recommend that if you're going to allow others to view your VoiceThread, you definitely choose to moderate your comments. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these checkboxes. And the reason it's so important to select moderate comments is that if you're creating a VoiceThread that you'll be using with students or that students will be creating in a classroom, it's very important that you take a look at the comments as they come in so that you can approve them and try and ensure that there's not something inappropriate that someone says that will then appear on your student's project. I'm going to go ahead and click Save and then that is going to um, be part of the uh, settings for this particular voice thread. And I now have some choices about how I would like to share this. If I'm an elementary teacher, I may want to consider adding email addresses for individual um, parents, and you can add those addresses individually like this. But if you're a secondary teacher or simply want to add a link to a website, this can be the easiest way to be able to share your voice threads. If you click this button right here, get a link, it is going to allow you to click on it and copy the link to your clipboard, which you can then paste in a new window. And if I move my window up here a little bit, you'll be able to see that I'm going to click on my address bar, and I'm going to either right-click or control-click and paste that link. And so this address is going to actually go to the voice thread that I created, and people are going to be able to see that voice thread and they'll be able to actually leave comments on it if they would like to. The last thing you'll want to notice is that you've got some other options here at the bottom. Playback options you can leave at their default setting, but sometimes I like to change the weight from four seconds to one second, and then I will save that. And then the other thing you might like to do is embed your voice thread into a web page. And so you can use this to click and either copy the direct link, as what we've done already, or you can copy the embed code, and that looks scary, but what you're going to be able to do, and I'll demonstrate that in a second voice um, uh, screencast about VoiceThread, is you can actually put that into a blog post, and then you'll be able to share that as an embedded video that people can just click on and immediately view, instead of having to go to a separate web page. So that's about it for the three steps of creating your voice thread. After you have finished creating your voice thread, you'll be able to click on the link at the top that says My Voice, and the new voice thread that you've created should show up over here on the side. All of these voice threads that we see um, that are in blue are actually voice threads that have been created by other people and I'm not sure exactly, there it is, why it wasn't showing up, but here is my voice thread, and as I mouse over it, I'll be able to see how many comments that I have on here, and also how many views that voice thread has had. So, remember that the website voicethread.com is the one that we've been using. It is free to create a limited number of accounts, and as I discussed in my initial um, screencast about using VoiceThread. If you are an educator, you will definitely want to sign up for an educator account, and that will give you a lot more freedom and possibilities for what you can do with your account. You also might consider some of the pro accounts that VoiceThread has. I am not affiliated with them and do not have a financial relationship making this recommendation to you, but it is definitely a wonderful thing to be able to have your students with their own accounts, and as you use VoiceThread and your students use VoiceThread and get more familiar with the the ways that they can be appropriately leaving comments for each other. It's just great for them to have their own accounts. So I hope this has been helpful. And the final screencast I'll be sharing in the seven-part series is how you can embed your voice thread inside a blog post.